In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform the Bonferroni correction in Excel. Specifically, this example will show you how to use the Bonferroni correction following a significant one way and over result to determine where the group differences lie. As always, please do drop a like on this video if you find it useful and leave a comment below if you have any questions. So let's get into Excel. I'm starting this example having already performed a one way and over test. And by the way, if you want to know how to perform a one way and over test and interpret the results in Excel, then I recommend you watch my previous tutorial. Let me give you a quick overview of the test. I measured the body length in centimeters of rabbits from three different regions in Europe, and each group represents a different region. In each region or group, I measured 15 rabbits. I performed a one way and over test to see if there were any significant differences between the average rabbit body length measures between the three regions. And as you can see in the cell highlighted in yellow, the p-value for the one way and over was really low. And it was so low that it was below my alpha level, which was 0.05. Therefore, I concluded that there was a significant difference between the means of my groups. The next job is to perform post hoc tests to see exactly where these significant differences lie. In other words, which specific groups are significantly different from the other. In this situation, there are many types of post hoc tests that you can perform, but here I'm going to do a simple approach of performing individual student t-tests and then correcting the multiple comparisons with the Bonferroni correction. So what I need to do is to perform individual student t-tests for every possible comparison between the three regions or groups. This means I need to compare region 1 to region 2, region 2 to region 3, and finally region 3 to region 1. I've created a separate video tutorial on how to perform student t-tests by using Excel, which covers these steps in more detail. So I recommend that you check that out if you're interested, but I'll briefly go over the steps here. Let's start with a comparison of region one to region two. To do this, I will click on an empty cell and enter equals t-test open bracket. Then I will click and drag on the data for region one. I'll then add a comma. Next, I will click and drag on the data for the second group, which is region two. And then I'll add another comma. Since I did not pre-specify whether one group's average value is greater or smaller than the other, I will perform a two-tailed analysis by entering two. I'll then add a final comma. And now because I have independent groups, I'm going to enter two again to perform a two sample t-test and assume both groups have equal variance. Then I will close the bracket and press enter to run the test. So the p-value for the comparison between regions one and two was 0.066. Now the next job is to repeat doing those student t-tests with the same settings, but for the comparisons between region two and three, and then region three and one. So I'll do this now, but because you already know how to do this, I'll speed this up. Okay, so we have our three p-values for our three post-hoc comparisons. The next step is to perform the Bonferroni correction. So the alpha level of my one way and over test was 0.05. This means I would conclude the test was significant if my p-value was less than or equal to 0.05, which it clearly was. Now for the post-hoc tests, I need to adjust my alpha level via the Bonferroni method in this case to account for the multiple hypotheses I'm performing. And this is because the more hypotheses I perform, the more chance I have of discovering a significant result purely by chance. So this would cause an increased likelihood of a false positive result, which is known as type one error. In fact, with three tests being considered, I have a 14% chance of observing at least one significant result, even if all the tests are actually not significant. If you want to learn more about the Bonferroni correction and why it is used, then I recommend that you see my other tutorial on the Bonferroni test clearly explained. So how do we perform the Bonferroni correction? Well, it's actually quite easy. You simply take your original alpha level and divide this by the number of post-hoc tests that you are performing. In this example, this would be 0.05 divided by three. And to do this in Excel, I'll click on an empty cell and enter equals, and then I'll click on a cell containing my original alpha level and divide this by three because I performed three post-hoc tests. Then I'll press enter. 
So my bomb for only corrected alpha level is now 0 0.0167. This means if the p-value for my postdoc test was less than or equal to 0 0.0167, then I'll conclude that that test is significant. If it is greater than this value, then I'll conclude that the test is not significant. And if I look at my three postdoc tests, I can see that the first p-value is greater than 0 0.0167 whereas the other two p-values were less than this. It's easy to manually look at the p-values if you only have a small number of tests. However, if you have a lot of tests, then it may be easier to use the if function in Excel. This means Excel will automatically tell you if one number is larger than another. In a new cell, I will enter equals if, open bracket, then I will click on the cell containing the p-value I am interested in. Then I will enter the less than symbol, and equals, and then I'll click on the cell containing the bomb for only corrected alpha level. I'll then add a comma and enter yes in speech marks. I'll then add another comma and then I'll add no in speech marks, and then I'll close the bracket. So what this function is saying is that if the p-value is less than or equal to the bomb for only corrected alpha level, then say yes if it is true or no if it is false. And before I press enter, I will add a dollar symbol before the column letter and the row number of the cell containing my bomb for only corrected alpha level. And you'll see why shortly. Now I'll press enter. We can see that a no is returned here. This means that the p-value for this test is not less than or equal to the bomb for only corrected alpha level. So the test is not significant. Now I can copy this formula down by selecting the cell and dragging the green dots in the corner. This will replicate the formula for the other tests. And because we inserted those dollar symbols, it means that the cell containing the bomb for only corrected alpha level will not change as I move the formula down. And as we saw by manually inspecting the tests, the other two tests are significant. So to bring all of this together and taking into account the region's average values, as shown in the lower left, we can say that after performing the one-way ANOVA test, there was a significant difference between the average body lengths of the three different rabbit groups. Postdoc analyses with the Bonferroni method determined that the rabbits in region 3 were significantly longer in body length compared with the rabbits from regions 2 and region 1. And there you have it. Now you know how to perform postdoc tests with the Bonferroni correction method by using Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.